Uh, yeah, my dad hasn't been doing very well, and I've had to stay close to home here recently because he's really going downhill. Um, and I've been kind of trying to convince him to go to the hospital here, but he doesn't seem to want to, so I've been sort of checking up on him here. I live uh, very close to where he's living. I was lucky to find an apartment here that's only a few streets over, so I'm, you know, constantly checking up over there. Go ahead. Yeah, Roger. Okay, and he refuses to go to the hospital. Um, hmm. uh, what, what does he have, do you know? Okay, well, he was diagnosed diabetic, and uh, the thing is he's got a right foot that's red and inflamed right now. And what I'm afraid of is that uh, gangrene could set in because he's it's red and inflamed. Um, he says... Okay. That's the situation as it stands. Go ahead. Yeah, Roger. Uh, knowing what you know, uh, uh, maybe take the lead. I would just call an ambulance and say, pick this guy up. Yeah, I suppose that's possible. Well, I'll tell you something. When I used to live with him, he fell out of bed a couple of times, and he wanted me to pick him up. And I said, look, there's no way. I'm calling 911, that's it. And, of course, he got really upset. I said, look, you know, you, I can't pick him up. For one thing, you know me, right? I'm a pretty small guy, and uh, if I lifted him, I could end up putting my back out, plus I could end up injuring him worse. Like, if, if he had already gotten an injury, it could injure him worse. So I am I was, you know, cautioning on the sense of calling the ambulance. And they did come. They recommended at the time that he go to the hospital. He refused to go. What they ended up doing, and this is their standard procedure, I guess, is that they made him sign a form saying <laughs> they recommended that he go to the hospital. He refused to go. So then we, you know, he signed it, I signed it, basically to say that they wouldn't be held responsible uh, at the end of it all. <laughs> Okay, Mark, I'm for problem. No, the project check is all the way marked uh, balloon cap for a no. He may be a video, he says, but come up here and cheap cap for a no. Only get this up. Oh, yeah, we can fabricate it too, but it's just that... When it's already done, it's already solid. You can attach it to the end and it's finished. Roger. Okay, I'll yeah, Roger. Well, maybe you're too close. Get your uncle there to give him a hard time. That's true. That's true. Anyway, yeah, so I just wondered, are, are you still working in the IBM field? No, no, no. I retired uh, four years ago, no. And uh, prior to that, six years before that, so it's been ten years since I, I was in the IBM. Uh, yeah, my last employment was with uh, Laurentian Bank. Okay. What exactly did you do in IBM? I remember you mentioning it to me, but uh, it escapes me now, actually. But uh, my dad was in IBM. I don't know if I mentioned that to you back in the 60s. Um, he was a computer programmer at Northern Electric, and he was sent to their training school at the time to be a, a systems analyst. and. Uh, before he left there, he was a senior programmer, actually. Roger. Well, I, Montreal was a small was a small department, so we were only uh, eight people. I had every job right to the almost the top, the second to the top. And uh, our department was a unique department within IBM. We took care of, uh, uh, I will say.
say at the time 60-70% of the stock market movement within Canada. And uh, the Quebec branch was responsible for, at the time, Quebec City, uh, Ottawa, uh, Nova Scotia, and, uh, and all the stockbrokers in Montreal. So all activity went through IBM. It still does, by the way. There's only two firms in IBM, if you do trading, um, that it goes through, basically. So, uh, so yeah, so I was uh, everything from sales to uh, support to... Uh, to, uh, to running the applications. Uh, that's a long time, mind you. I worked there for uh, 36 years, so uh, went, I had all the jobs. Now, did you, uh, that was downtown, I'm assuming, right? That was the IBM Tower, because I went on YouTube a couple of months ago, and if, if you get a chance, go in, on YouTube and Google this. You'll see... Um, uh, a picture of the IBM tower both lit up at night and during the day and it's amazing the, the way they show this thing I, I forget what you have to google it under but it's um, it, it's uh, it, it's the IBM office tower and it shows it in the daytime and then it shows it all lit up at night <laughs> IBM Training Center on Laird Boulevard in Town of Mount Royal at the time, and that was in the 60s. I don't know how long it stayed there, but um, I don't think it's there anymore. But that was a training center. I gather that they sent people from different companies that had IBM equipment. So in other words, you know, it could have been somebody working, let's say, for General Electric or Northern Electric at the time, and they were sent to the IBM Training Center to learn the IBM products up there at the school. Yeah, I don't, uh, I don't know that particular place I started. I guess it was 60, 69 thereabouts. Uh, but uh, no, I don't remember that place. Uh, I mean, IBM had a lot of training places. I, I was all over the states and on uh, Toronto, of course, and uh, a lot of places. So. Uh, if he was in um, uh, fix, fixing uh, computers like Model 65s and 360s and all that kind of stuff, uh, they had their own uh, support uh, out of Montreal. Where they were, I they were I don't know. To be honest with you, um, um, I, I wasn't in the uh, manufacturing or or the uh, support side for that. What IBM is doing today, IBM is becoming more and more of a service business like as you know they sold their laptop and PC businesses long ago and um, but they uh, they're more in the service industry and uh, 